What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Off the Record. Listen, getting pulled over sucks. Getting sitting on the side of the road, the lights flashing in your eyes, the whole deal, that's all terrible. The ticket, even worse. What's worse than that? The insurance premiums. It goes crazy. One basic ticket can compound itself over a period of years. And if you have an expensive car or multiple cars, that is a, it's like a double whammy every time because it costs you more to insure all your cars because you got that ticket. Listen, do you know why that racket works so well for them? Because most people don't fight their tickets. Don't be those people. Be smart. Always fight your tickets. That is is where Off the Record comes in. Off the Record is a service that helps you get in touch with a qualified attorney to fight your ticket or misdemeanor on your behalf. You don't have to go to court or anything. They cover 90% of the population of the United States, and they have a 97% success rate. And if they don't get that ticket off your record, you don't pay them. Here's what you do. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST Or download the iOS or Android Off The Record app and use code TST10 within the app. That code or that link will get you 10% off all services at Off The Record until May of 2023. So download it now, stash that code now, and don't wait until you're on the side of the road to go, huh, Maybe now I should have a lawyer. Be prepared. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off The Record app and use code TST10 and tell them we sent you. This is a service that I personally use and uh, it's something we should all have in our back pockets. And we're also brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those really cool sunglasses you see me wearing in every video with the matte finish? Those are Dylan Optics. The NIR lens technology technology means not only do they look cool, different from all other sunglasses out there, they work. Man, it's like... HD life. I work in the middle of the desert. I work on top of mountains, um, out in cars all day long. And these things really keep my eyes in good shape. Um, at the end of a long day, my eyes don't hurt when I'm wearing my Dylans. They're, they're awesome. And if you go to the smokingtire.com and click on the partners tab, there's the Dylan banner right there. Use that link off the record is right next to Dylan on that page as well. Use that link. And if you buy a pair of Dylan Optics sunglasses, I will send you a free smoking tires t-shirt as a sign of appreciation for supporting the people who support us. All right, on this episode, uh, a man who needs very little introduction. You have probably heard of Tom Segura from his stand-up, his multiple Netflix specials, uh, his many, many appearances on Rogan, and his touring, and his acts, and God, is he fucking funny. Uh, But did you know he was super into cars? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, this episode will surprise you. We had a great time hanging out with Tom Segura on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Tom Segura, gentlemen and gentlemen. <laughs> What's oh, happening? Exciting. Oh my God. Were you just sweating as much as I was, Tom? Because yes, Jesus. yes. <laughs> this, look, these tech things, I just, I I pray, I, I cross my fingers and pray, and then I just start to get really angry. Yeah. I'm, for so. the audience, oh, there's Tom on the shot. We brought him in. Okay, yeah. I know. It's dude, like people like you and me aren't meant to be operating devices like no. this. I feel like, no. Right? And I'll tell you what really pisses me off is when you, like, you you like sign up and pay for all the wiring to be, you know what I mean? Like top <laughs> yeah. of the line, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, so this is the best system possible? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And you're like, what the, f-? I mean, I was texting this guy. I was like, hey dude, <laughs> what the fuck? Why did you make this? Why is my internet so shitty? And you tell me that it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> when you have, uh, when you have uh, Jamie, Joe Rogan's guy texting you back going, oh, fuck, dude, I don't even know. You go, oh, no, <laughs> tap out, tap out. <laughs> God damn it, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, the, now that our technical difficulties have ended, I hope. I'm, I'm so excited, man. I am, uh, I'm. I'm a fan. Did, am Are I already? You? Did we just fuck up already? No, no, you're nope. good. You're, you're everything okay. is perfect. No, everything's perfect. Okay. You might still same thing before. You might see yourself because you're gonna see okay. the show. Yeah, no. Thank you. I appreciate that you're a fan. I'm a fan. Well, nice. I um, I'm a you know I've since a a little kid, man. I am just all about cars. It was it was little toy cars, and then it was magazines, and I loved. 
I've loved the evolution into car videos. Like the whole world that um, that you do is like uh, it's how I entertain myself, fantasize, wind down, all of it. It's like you have a like a dream job. In, I would say the mind. exact same thing in verse. Flip it. If I couldn't do what I would do, I would only yeah. hang out with comics all day long. It is by oh, nice. far my my favorite nighttime moments that haven't involved having sex with somebody. We're yes. all hanging out with comics at a part of a comedy club that regular people don't get to go to. And that's yeah, just dude. like, ooh. It's what I, I miss the most is definitely hanging out at the comedy club. Because yeah. hanging out with comics is also is, is my favorite. Um, it's it's the best part about doing stand-up, I feel like, is just hanging out with like funny people and, and you know, having a good time. And that's like what the store and, and you know, all, all the good clubs are about. So... I miss it the most, but damn, I do love cars, man. So I tell really me, tell me about your love for cars. I know you dropped in in one of your specials. I forget if it was completely normal or ball hog. Um, I you dropped that you like to buy a lot of cars. It's there's a, just oh, a right. little nugget. It's an off throw where you're like, ah, I like to buy yeah. a lot of cars. Oh, I think it's a slavery joke. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> it's probably better to give people uh, more context. <laughs> bro, but, bro, the, I don't yeah. want to like go through and talk about your comedy a bit by bit but that you yeah. do have a couple of bits that i fucking i relate to so much oh um, thanks man. but i do want to, but start with the cars so how, what started your love for cars dude i mean i i it's funny because i have two boys i have two little kids and um you know it's like it's funny like you, there's all these there's so much commentary now on gender and everything and everyone's got an opinion on it but it's just funny how i have these two little boys and they both just gravitate to cars. Mm -hmm. They see cars, they see trucks and they're just fascinated and they they just want toy cars and you know, I I remember being like that as a kid, like like playing with little, you know, yeah. uh, little cars. And then I was really and I still am into car magazines. I like to actually pick up a magazine. I've done digital subscriptions and yeah. all that, but I love a car magazine. And I'm when I'm so going to an airport or through like buy a, a a magazine stand or something, um, I'll always pick up four or five car magazines. That's you know awesome. I mean? Good for you, man. I, 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 it makes me so happy to write for Road and Track magazine, yeah. like specifically, because that's the magazine that I read when I was a kid. And so, to be, I never thought it would be possible. As a kid, you're not like you're like some some guy somewhere wrote some this. Guy but it's not going to be yeah. me. And when it, it becomes you, dude. When my name got on that masthead, I was giddy as fuck. Yeah, dude, it's that it's it's super cool. And so from then it was like I was all I mean probably like most people, probably like you when you you know, when you read those magazines, of course they have to do a feature on Camrys and fucking uh, Taurus, but like yeah. I wanted it to read about performance cars. Like that's yeah. all I give a shit about. Of course. High performance. So um yeah, it became that and then when I started to, you know, uh, like there was a, a, an evolution of like so many cars. Like we, my dad also was like into switching cars. All oh, okay, the time. cool. He just always, always switched cars. You, you grew know? up in so, like Ohio, right? We moved a lot. I was in Ohio, the Midwest, um, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, and then my parents have been in Florida for you know, God, twenty five plus years now. Did your dad so, have cool cars? Like he changed he had, cars, but were any of them cool? He had a few that were. I remember. Um, let's see. When, I remember when he got a Mustang GT, which right. I thought was pretty what, rad. What year? You know, what like, year? Like like a Fox Body Mustang GT? It's, let's see. This was um, I'm trying to remember the year. This would have been 1995. Oh, like the round yeah. ones. Yeah, like the rounded off ones. Yeah, rounded off. Yeah. Uh, black um, GT, and I would take it to school sometimes, and I thought that was just the the most amazing feeling because I'd never driven a V8. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there like I had my I was driving my sister's Accord um, or like my mom was driving like a, an Avalon. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. This is, yeah. And then he gets this uh, Mustang GT and I'm like, Can I take it to school. He's like, yeah, sure. And I'm, I mean, I, wow. I thought I was in a fucking spaceship. Hell like, yeah. It was it was so crazy to drive that thing. Um, Me and my Over friends years, all had Mustangs in high school, and we all had – it was all about the big, lumpy cam. It didn't even matter if it made yeah. power or not. It just had to go – when you rolled up, and we were yeah. the fucking king of the world in that shit. I had a base model Mustang for a few years in, in high school. Nice. Um, the, the best was that he was – my dad was like – 
I was about to turn 16. He was like, he drove me to buy a few car lots, and he was like, how do you like these Mustangs? And I was like, yeah, this is the shit. This is great. And he was like, uh, thinking about getting you this Cobra. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you know, and at the time, I don't know. I mean, you remember like the evolution of horsepower? Yeah, power? yeah. No, at the you time, that would like have been 300, like 300. sound like 1,000, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was like 365, and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I tried to actually not show my excitement. I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Like, I didn't. I thought if I was too excited, he would be like, "What's going on?" Yeah, you, ca- so, you got to be real casual about it. Like, yeah, no, I yeah. heard. I heard that's. I heard it's real safe. I heard it's good. Safe. Yeah, it's got I heard dual they airbags. have like great seatbelts and shit. <laughs> so, he a couple times he mentions the Cobra, and we drive by, and I see an all black Mustang Cobra, and I was like, I don't think he understands what this is. <laughs> And I was just like, yeah, dude, that Cobra is a good idea. Yeah. And then then <laughs> he surprised me one day. And he was like, I got your car. It's the base model. I was like, the fuck is up? There's The Cobra is all you talked about. That was he's so like, cold. <laughs> he's like, yeah, no, I decided not to do the Cobra. Go oh, the I actually, I, you know, I had... I, I, I had this Mustang in high school as well, and when I went, I was going to look for used Mustangs. This was in, like, yeah. 98, and I was looking for 94s and 95s, so kind of the ones like your dad had, but, like, yeah. three or four years old. And I, shit you not, I went to a dealer asking for manual Cobra coupes, and this motherfucker showed me an automatic V6 convertible with the sport pack and straight face said, no, no. This is a Cobra. Straight faced and, and kept it up after I was like, there's only one exhaust tip. These are yeah. 16 inch wheels. <laughs> there's no. Where's the Cobra <laughs> emblem? Where, pal? There's anything. Eventually yeah. it went to open the hood and count the spark plug wires. Like it was fucking crazy. I guess he thought I was stupid or something. They, but. a lot of, a lot of fucking, you know, yeah. dealers. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny. Like you walk in today too. And there, there's some, some of them, my favorite type of like car salesman is the guy who's like yeah sure and then if you're like um i'm gonna look around he's like great give me a call if you want to you're like yeah sweet yeah but there's still a lot of them will be like i I had a guy um i wanted to look at the gt uh 500 that came out like Uh a year ago or two years ago the new uh, the new version the new upgrade from ford yeah and um i walked in i was like yeah he was like oh here's a here's just a gt like a regular and I was like, oh, no, I want to see, like, the 550 or whatever it's, it is. And he was like, that's a lot of car. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. I'm a and lot of like, man. Thanks. I was like, I was like, yeah, okay. He was like, it's expensive. I was like, I didn't think it was fucking free. And he's like, well, I'm just saying, like, oh, for, he's saying, for us to, yeah, he goes, yeah. like, for us to get that out would be, like, a lot of work. I'm like, wait, do you not want to sell it, though? <laughs> he was like, well, I'm just saying, man, it's a lot of car. It's not cheap. Do you wow. really want us to get it out? And I was like, no, I if, don't want you to get it. If just this keep, was at any dealer besides Galpin, go see Bo. Bo will take it. Do you know Bo Bachman okay. at Galpin? No. He's the owner of Galpin Autosports. He used to be on Pimp My Ride. They're the biggest Ford deal in the world. I bought like five cars from this dude. He will he will he's your he's your friend. If you want a Ford, okay. you talk to him. He's bought he's in the valley. He's easy. They're great. They have right. you. What you really want to do is get on their list when you buy a car from them. You're on yeah. their list when they have the parties for the new car launch, and their uh, parties are ill. They have the massive sushi bar. They got the Cuban guy outside with the hat rolling cigars. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's great. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking Wait, where did cool. you grow up, Matt? New York area. You grew up in New York. Yeah, yeah, like the the Jewy suburbs of of north of New York City. Okay. You okay. know? Do you know? Yeah, I'm sure you know Greg Fitzsimmons. Of course. I played on the golf team that Greg Fitzsimmons started in high school. You Rye, guys went to the same high school? Yeah, Rye Country Day School. He graduated like like 12 years before me. And, oh, uh, probably and 40 Nick, years before. Nick Kroll also. Man. Nick but, Kroll I mean, went there too. What's that? Nick Kroll went there too. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. my, we just, we just breed funny people in Rye Country Day School apparently. It sounds like it, man. <laughs> that's a... a that's a that's a good um, alum to be with, man. Yeah, but so the the the, the car the car at my high school I went it was a super you know ritzy Jewy private school the car that all the kids would convince their parents was really safe was the Audi S four and no one really knew what an S four was yet all right, it wasn't really like, a this thing is, yeah. and they were it's like oh really... S means like safe <laughs> and they, it's and they the all, safe four they all crashed them every single oh dude one you'll them. love this so my dad I was like what did you drive in high school. And uh, 
1956 MG. Oh, wow. Man and of taste. Like, they're beautiful, right? Yeah. Like they're, you look at them and you're like, you, you drove, this looks like something that like a head of state would yeah. get driven in. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you drove to high school in this? You know, it's like, literally what the, uh, the mean father in cool runnings in Jamaica drives. <laughs> the one who's yes. like, you will stay and work for my lawyer friend. <laughs> yes. Drives one of these. <laughs> it's that type of, I mean, I actually was, I was like, this looks like, like a propaganda vehicle, like a dictator <laughs> would, would ride in this. Yeah. Thing. You got to put flags on the fenders and shit. It, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> like it and it's so like regal and i go and he told me about it and, and and then he goes my brother has it and i go okay and then one day it's at the house and i'm like what's this he goes oh he like he sold it to me and i go dude this is amazing and he knows i i like cars he goes this will be yours oh awesome like, when, and i go that's fucking awesome and i would fly home you know i live on the west coast i would fly back to florida and we would get in the car and he would like, you know, tell me about whatever the story about the car. And then I'd be working on this like really flimsy, you know, uh, uh, manual transmission. And I'm yeah. like, man, this thing is delicate, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we would do little drives and I'm like, this is such a cool, like it's a, it's its own experience to of drive course. a car like that. Yeah. And I would always refer to, you know, like I, I can't wait to get this one day. And then one day, like a couple of years ago, I fly home. I'm like, where's the MG? He's like, oh, I sold it. And I'm Aww. like, whoa, whoa. Like, this is like, I thought this was like my inheritance. He goes, yeah, I sold it. <laughs> I'm like, what? After the Cobra? This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> I go, dude, that's like, my sisters are going to get mom's jewelry. And then this is my thing, right? He's like, yeah, but I sold it. And I'm like. <laughs> now you got to go track it down. Now we got to get one of those, you know, fake car hunter TV shows to go yeah. get it for you, right? Uh, man, I, it bummed me out. I was like, dude, what, I mean, what happened to the whole story? He's like, yeah, I forgot. I forgot that I was going to get it. You, you should prom <laughs> promise him a vacation to like to Hawaii and instead just get him a coupon for a lazy river somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I took him on that vacation to Hawaii, by the way, over, over New Year's. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I've, I've done my part. Believe me. So when you started doing, uh, you know, road work uh, and and uh, and going out on the road, did you did you buy a road appropriate vehicle, and did you did you always like maintain car enthusiasm, or was it just oh yeah, broke I was just all, I, I always maintained the enthusiasm, and I always stayed in like the like an appropriate you know lane for for my income level. So <laughs> even though I was always like fantasizing about these, you know, exotics and like just perform, I, I never. You know, I, I I'm trying to think. I've been I've had so many cars out here. I mean, some of them were one time. Oh, this is great. I went to a, a BMW dealership when I was still working in post production, and I saw an advertisement online. I printed it out, and it was a three series that was only like a few years old, and the car didn't have that many miles on it, and it was like twenty two. It should have been like thirty eight gram. Like uh -huh. what the fuck. And so I go down there and I show it to him and they're like, yeah, this is a mistake. And I'm like, well, well it says that it's the price. And they were like, okay. <laughs> so, so I bought it and then. Wait, okay. As in they honored it? They honored it. Oh, great. And, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I bought it. And then a year later I was having it serviced there. And the, one of the sales guys came out and he was like, you know that like your hood color doesn't match the body color, right? And I was like, oh, no. what? And I go, I'm colorblind. Like I don't, I don't see what you're talking about. He's like, this is definitely not the same color. And I go, well, so what? I mean, what's going on? And he's like, well, what happened was this has probably been in an accident, and then they threw a like a close color match hood on it, but that doesn't match. And I go, you know what's funny is I bought it here. <laughs> And then he just turned around and walked away. See, what happened is this guy fucked you, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. I bought it yeah. here. <laughs> here, that's You I had, fucked me. I had like, the yeah. opposite of that happen. I blew up my mom's minivan's engine. My mom, my first car was a Mercury Villager minivan. Nice. Uh, remember the Nautica Villager? Sure. Cars themed like clothes. It went lasted like 10 years. It was amazing. And I blew up the engine by sucking sand into it, having off-roaded it on the beach. Uh. We had it towed to the dealer, 
and one of the techs like bought it for fucking scrap, put a new engine in it, and and was driving it. <laughs> and when I got my next car and took it to get it serviced, I saw it in the staff parking lot. It had the same like snowboarding stickers on it. And shit, I was like, "What is that?" He's like, "Oh yeah, Jose brought it back. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I upgraded it, man. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, um, so I mean, I had that. I mean, I had I had a Lincoln Aviator for a oh, second. Oh yeah, those were cool uh, actually. Those were nice. I saw that they're bring, they brought them back. They did bring the aviator back, and it is pretty nice. You know who's borrowing one? Uh, oh. I have a friend. I don't want to drop his client's name, but my fr I have a very good friend who is an estate manager for a, an A-list celebrity couple. He manages all their homes all over the country, and they get these marketing cars from the companies, which are like press cars like I get, except they don't have yeah. to do anything. They just, yeah. they just get them. And so the celebrity couple fucked off to their other house for the coronavirus and so my homie is just rolling around in this aviator on M plates Dude. <laughs> that they're supposed to have. It's nice. It's really I nice. I want to hit this level so badly where they do that. Like, I remember one of my friends was working at E and this is a few years ago when Joel McHale was hosting uh, The Soup. Yeah. It was still The, the Soup. And, uh, and he was like, oh yeah, we went to this thing. Joel did a show, and then uh, Porsche brought the. At the time, it was like the new, the new Panamera. I was like, "What do you mean they brought that?" <laughs> he's like, "He's like, oh yeah, they just brought it, and they were like, just drive this because we know you, you like it, and then people will see you in it." And I was like, "That is a thing." That is like, a thing. Just, that's amazing. It's man. a thing, and and honestly, I think you're the only person stopping yourself from accessing that thing. I think all so you I need, all you, calls? all you need is me to introduce you to one person, and you are in that club. It's Matt, not a hard please. thing to do. I got you covered, man. Where I got you. I'm not one of those guys that hoards the resources. I spread the wealth, dude. I'm about it. There's people that will Good never, guys. ever give you the number of somebody to get press cars from, but I'm not that guy. There's a lot of people like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what happens, like as that. I'm sure you know, because you've done Rogan a few times, is that once people know that you have a, a line to Rogan, you become this fucking middleman. Even if you're already kind of uh, famous, you become a yeah. middleman for fucking Joe Rogan. The best, I've, I've told Joe this even on his podcast, that like my favorite is um, when somebody will just, uh, they'll start telling me that how big of a fan they are of me. Which you're like, oh, thanks, man. And then they're like, man, you know, they start listing like specials and bits. And you're like, yeah, great. Thanks. Appreciate it. And they're like, I'm just, I love you. And you're like, great. And then they're like, hey, so um, can you give this book to Joe? And I'm like, wow. what? <laughs> like, I've been through that so many fucking times. What are you talking about? And they're like, uh, no, I'm just saying, I want to give him this book. I'm like, well, I thought you were just a big fan. And they're yeah. like, not really. Dude, yeah. you know what that reminds you of? I'm, wa I'm watching your specials, and you talk about just people cold asking you for, like, travel advice. Just like, oh, yeah, you travel. Like, where oh, do yeah. I go? I had a moment where I was like, this is my guy here. Because people do the same thing with me for cars. For they just cars. cold. Be like, yo, what car should what I car buy? Should and yeah. I'm like, I, I, uh, uh, a 1987 Porsche lifted four inches on mud tires. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, and they're like, no, no, but you, like, you know, what car should I buy? And I'm like, yeah. who are you and what do you need in your life? <laughs> right. What do you do? What is the purpose of this purchase? <laughs> it's, it's amazing how far, but I think, I think you're right. They just, they, in, well, you talk about it in your special, not here. That I think people are just looking for any way to connect, even yeah. if it's a, like a massive reach. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I could have that car conversation with some. I mean, I would have that with you for hours. I, you know, um, so I was last year, I was on this big tour and I was like, I should get like a crazy car, you know? So, like I, to do I, the tour in or as a, as a, as a trophy for yourself for doing the tour? Oh, like a trophy. Oh, like yeah, a, okay. Like a trophy car. Okay. And so I went and I test drove uh, a 720S. Oh, yes. Well, that's, that's a trophy car right there. It's a trophy car. I test drove a 48 Spider. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What'd you think? By the way, I got to get, I loved it. What did I you prefer it. between the 720 and the 488? I got it. Okay. Let me tell you this. First of all, there is a big difference in the response you have to a vehicle when somebody takes you on a real test drive uh -huh. versus like... <laughs> Make a ride on Doheny and then we'll pull right back in. You're like, what the fuck, man? We're, yeah, hit, we're yeah. doing thirty. Yeah. Like, so my my seven twenty test drive was like that. It was like, hit a right at this light, hit a right at this light, pull back in, and you're like, mm. I mean, I know how it 
I feel like it goes on and off. And I know how the doors work, <laughs> you know? It didn't break you know, in this mile. I, I'm supposed to give you, they're like, do you want it? Like, do I want a $350,000 car? <laughs> Based that on I that? Drove for yeah. 30 seconds? I don't know. The 48 was a much better test drive. And so I, I just enjoyed it more. I liked the handling more. I, I, I was more connected to that car. Interesting. Um, I, did, I didn't get it. But um, my experience of the two for the, for the time that I drove them, I was a much bigger 48 fan. Okay, cool. It's, it's yeah. interesting to see how what people's opinions are and, and what, what drives them. I think for you, what would be really awesome, I mean, you can't do it right now, but like book a gig in Vegas or something and go to Dream Racing because they've got oh. a racetrack. And they'll let yeah. you, you know, for, for a pretty reasonable amount of money, a few hundred bucks, you can have laps, proper laps, you know, in at a racetrack cars. in both of those cars. And you can see what they're like. You know when when you're when you're going, um, your your response made like was completely clear to me that you definitely prefer the 720. Well, you know I do, but it's but it's not for an objective scientific reason. I I think the 720 is magic. Um, there are it is it is so disturbingly fast when you push yeah. it. I took I've taken them to track days before. And it's like a fucking cheat code. I mean, really, remember like back in the day you're playing Gran Turismo and everybody's like, yep. no skylines, bro, no skylines. Because <laughs> it was so much better than everything yeah. else. This is that in real life at, at, See, au at Auto Club you, Speedway, dude. You make me want to try it again. Like, you should have a to go. To actually you experience it again. It's so much faster than everything else that yeah. it like, you know, you know, Auto Club, the, the Fontana, the NASCAR circuit? Yeah. Uh, they, I did in a in an unprepped 720s Spider, 181 miles an hour on the front straight of that track. Whoa. That's like, my friend is a very good track driver and has a GT3 RS, and he saw like 157. The differential is extraordinary. That's not to say I don't love 488s. I absolutely yeah. do. But the McLaren does its spread between comfort and psycho is an is a huge spread. It's it's so comfortable. So yeah. how tall, especially because how tall are you? I've never seen you in person. So six feet. Can, yeah, for tall people, well, six feet, you're good in either. 488s yeah. are comfy too. I don't know, but if you're shopping on that level, I say cheers to you, sir. Well, yeah, I ended up getting <laughs> n n nothing. So I mean, I uh, the uh, I'll tell you this though. Back to the to the test driving, there is something about like I've test driven things on the road. Yeah, and uh, the best test drive that I ever had resulted in me flying home and getting that car. And that was because I was I was doing like my thing where I was like I I'll research a car for months, you know, and mm -hmm. I was I got obsessed with the uh, 981 Cayman. Oh yeah, GTS. it's a lovely I, car. But I was watching these videos and everybody reviewing them was like, this thing is fucking amazing. So I was in North Carolina and I, I found one at a dealership. This guy, it was like a little more rural. I think I was outside Raleigh, North Carolina. He was like, we get on the highway and then we get on some side road and he's like, Hey man, like why aren't you punching it? I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, he's like, hit it, punch it into this turn. And I was like, okay. They were doing like a buck twenty on nice. like just on street. And he was like, Yeah, do you wanna do you wanna drive it more? I mean, just that to me, that experience of that test drive made me fly home and get one. Car salesman, take note. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. note, car salesman. I know you're out there. So you got you got you still have that Cayman? No, I sold it. I um and I re I deeply regret it. I I had that came in, I sent it to BBI and they did like the works on it. And that was like that was like a go kart just juiced up. Yeah. And it, it it was such a thrill drive. Every time I got it, I had a little smile on my face. Every time I got in the car, you know, it was that fun. I, I did get an M two competition and I, I had a bunch of dining mods nice. done on it. Oh yeah, it's, choice it's, mods. That's a fun it's ride. Good, yeah. It's a, it's a fun one. Is that what you're working with right now? A Dynan M two? Yeah, a Dyna M2, and I got a E63S. Oh, fun! Nice. Oh, yeah, I agree with your taste. This is good because you have kids, yeah. so you need the back seat, right? You can't be too selfish about it. Yeah, I mean, I I got my wife a, a nice Range Rover. Um, so once you get if you get her something nice, then I'm like, you really don't need another car. I'll just get another <laughs> car. <laughs> no, good for you. I like I like your taste. Your taste is your taste is on point right now. That's good. What was your first? Was that nine eight one your first nice car? I mean, you know, that's that was the that was the first one where I was like, 
hey, I this this like it kind of felt crazy to, mm-hmm. to like a real performance car. I'd gotten cars that had you know like I had some I don't even remember the Infinity that you know had like 330 horsepower. Like and, a G35. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I you know that was like it was a nice car, man. It was comfortable. It was, but I, that that I was hunting that Porsche for for a while and like ever. Here's the thing. I was telling myself I wasn't going to sell it, and then I did. I was like, you know, because I also have like the, the, a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and um, you know, it's just like, sorry, sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so when I got I got rid of that car, immediately, immediately, I'm like, man, I I miss that Porsche, and I've just been like playing that game again now. Of I've been eyeballing. Uh, of course, like new releases and, and, and figuring out what I could possibly get into, but also because of that, you know, the market and like the whole world of older Porsches, mm-hmm. it's kind of fun to hunt, Yeah, you know, look, look like at, look at old 930 turbos and 964s. Dude, and turbos just- have settled. If you want a, dr- a turbo to drive, it's a great time to buy a turbo to drive because the speculation prices of two years ago have really mellowed out and you can buy one and just drive it now. Yeah. Maybe that's the thing to do. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. Or, you know, if you wanted to keep it new and you wanted that that Cayman GTS, you know, the new Cayman GTS four liter is coming out with the four liter engine and the GTS suspension. So it doesn't beat the shit out of you. That is going to be a choice. Really? That's coming out later this year. Yeah, the press car is not here yet. The press car gets here, I think, in August. So uh, so delivery should be shortly after that. Yeah, but they've now got, you know, because the new Caymans are the 781s with the four-cylinder that nobody really yeah. likes. So they've got yeah. the, the new GT4 is a four-liter six-cylinder. And they put that in the Boxster Spider, but they also put it in the GTS. So you can get a sort of more regular suspension that's not like race car, carbon bucket seats. It's a little yeah. more usable, but you get the four liter six. You've driven the GT4 and the Club Sport, right? Didn't I see yes. a video with that? Yeah, that, that was the last generation car. And yeah. I drove the current generation car as well, which is even a, a step up from that. Yeah, they're they're. How great. do you like driving the GT4s? They're really, really good. They're, re- they're really good. They're really fun. They're reasonably practical. Um, but what, what everyone who buys them sells them 13,000 miles later. <laughs> I feel like that's exact. 13,000 miles is the exact ownership distance for yep. a GT4. Everyone drives them the exact same. They're all the same on Bring a Trailer when they're for sale. Um, the gearing, which I'm sure you've heard before, is a little weird. Um, mm-hmm. It's not the kind of thing you really notice driving on the street. But if you go to the track or the canyons, you realize that second gear is good for, I think, want to say 78 miles an hour and third gear is good for like 114 like it's ridiculous it's so the gearing is insane and so Sharkworks in Fremont makes a re-gear set for second third fourth fifth that fixes the gearing and it's probably like 20 g's but it really makes the car really come alive but other than that no complaints Great car. Okay. And then are you a fan? Because I know I watched your most recent uh, Turbo S. The 911 Turbo S? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So fucking fast. It's so so, fast. It's so fast. I mean, like... Like I said in the video, if you're if you are at all budget conscious and you're not a racing driver, just get the Carrera S because in 95% of situations, it feels just as fast. Uh-huh. You need to be full throttle at like over 100 miles an hour for the turbo to truly feel different because, you know, they're all turbo now. Right. You know, so so, so the only di- the irony is the difference between the S and the turbo is displacement, not the presence of turbochargers, which is f- nomenclature wise stupid. You know, what you should check out. Honestly, no bullshit. What? A ty- yeah. a Taycan. Really? They're fucking crazy, dude. I heard that, like, um, so I'm, I, I, I like going to that Porsche driving experience. In oh, have you been? Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, my buddy Johnny's like the head instructor there. And so he, he told me he took out that Taycan uh, Turbo S and he was like, it, he's like, it is shit your pants. Yeah, guy. yeah. It's war, it's warp speed berserker style. Like, do you like going to Six Flags with the Magneto roller coasters? That's, yeah. that's what it is. It's that over and over and over again. It's real crazy. For, in my experience, like, the, the thing that I really like 
in that Porsche world the most. Having like just taken them out like on those tracks and everything, those GT cars just to me the way that they feel right is more exciting. It's like, precision. Like I did a full day in the Turbo S, and I was like, this is a badass car. This is the last generation, but uh, it feels like a little more. You know, it feels heavier. Mm -hmm. It feels like. Um, you know, it is like an executive car, and that GT just feels like a, a fucking race car. Yeah, I, it's alive. Like it's feeling. alive. It's fizzy. You know, it's yeah, really, yeah. it's really precise and surgical, and and you, you know, every motion of your fingers translates into something happening in the car. Have you gone out on at PEC? Have you fucked with the slick track? Oh yeah, that's yeah. the jam. I could do a hundred laps at twelve miles an hour drifting a GT3 that around was that. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah, it's the that best. That was the most fun. Oh, dude, yeah, we gotta we gotta go out and, and run some laps down there. My girl Jen runs be, that joint. That'd be fun. I did M school too out. Um, oh, in, out uh, in thermal. Yes. Did you enjoy that? I had a great time. They really do a good job there. I mean, I would give I give so many props to that experience uh, uh, as a uh, for a day. It's it really is. You know, totally different than what they do at, at Porsche, but um, really fun. Each of these schools really has their own character. Zach did the AMG one, and it was like drift school, basically. <laughs> it's like, here's, really? here's your car. <laughs> Have fun. Come in for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they've I, got, you know, some of the, the snow tracks they build, like uh, Bridgestone uh, winter driving experience and stuff. The, those those were, That's where it starts to get real gnarly, up in northern Canada and shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Have you driven any of the, the Porsche GT cars on the street? Because like I've, I've driven them around a little bit, and, and Matt, you can speak to this too. Like they're very stiff. So if you're at like the kind of you're in the bubble of PEC, you're like this car is amazing. It's <laughs> yeah. so tight and intuitive. And it talks to my fingers. And then you go over like the first 405 expansion joint. You you're like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I drove my buddy's GT3 RS um, uh, on the street, and uh, yeah, I mean. When you're sitting there and you're just like in bumper to bumper traffic, you're like, man, I should just get like an S class. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. But, you know, every time, like for, for me, like when, when the world was open, going to do spots at night, it's the most fun time to take out your performance car in LA. You know, it's like you drive to do your 10 o'clock spot, you're driving home 1130 midnight. It's a blast. I like, love driving like three in the morning around. It, oh, when, yeah, when, man. When, and the coronavirus has proven that with an appropriate number of vehicles on the road, the road system is actually quite good. It's pretty like great. shocking how good it is when there's like a third of the cars on the road. It's been amazing, dude. Yeah. It's been amazing. Did you read gonna, that they've issued? I'm going to miss this when uh, when the pandemic's over. I'll I know. Like, Did you read yeah. that they've issued more hundred plus tickets this month than they've ever issued before? I heard that, man, and I, I was I was like wondering, I was like, I wonder if, like before I read a, an article about that, I was like, I wonder if they're really out there patrolling speed, and oh, you're like, yeah. oh yeah. Oh they yeah, really they are. are, dude. I got a, I got one early. You did? I got, yeah, I got one just a couple days after the shutdown, and it was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a big, it, was, it was the biggest one I've actually ever been written for. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't say the number. I'll tell you off air what the number was, but it was okay. enormous. It was enormous. It was in Dude, the Turbo S. When was I was in, in high school, my sister uh, got a ticket doing 105 and a 55. Mm. <laughs> that was pretty That's crazy. That's a good one. We used to in my in my crate like in my mid 20s it used to be a goal of me and my friends to triple the speed limit. That was really when when it started to get crazy. When cuz when I first got my Respect. Corvette <laughs> When I first got my Corvette, and it was like, yeah. we're going to triple the 55-mile-an-hour speed limit, which is 165, and I would do yes. it regularly. Yeah. It was, it was uh, the roads, uh, there's some highways around New York, like, you know, Ocean Parkway, by yeah. any chance? Ocean Parkway used to be, like, the fucking standing mile road back in the day, and uh, the, they got so fed up with it, they just let it become really like wavy and just fell apart. terrible yeah. and now if you try and do like over a hundred on that road you will actually be like launched into the weeds <laughs> so bad dude i had a terrifying like when i got that car back from bbi the the cayman yeah i, I had a gig up in oxnard and uh late at night after the late show driving it back on the 101 uh -huh. it was like you you hit like eight mile stretches with no cars yeah it's late enough and uh at some at some point, some like tricked up Honda pulled up next to me and just started, you know, revving his engine. So I was like, well, I want to see what this thing can do now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just, you know, threw it in Sport Plus and I was I was and I just let it rip. And 
once we were entering back into like proper LA and we're rounding a corner, I looked down, I see like 145. I was like, I, I got to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is die. getting a little out of hand. Yeah. 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 And right on the edge of town where the, where the city meets the desert is where all the cops are. That's where, That's you, where they right, are. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right at the edge of, at the edge of town where it ends. Yeah. Um, so what else in between? What else? Uh, what other cars have you owned and, and enjoyed or owned and more importantly owned and absolutely fucking hated? Oh, and, and, uh, well, when I was really balling um, about 10 years ago, I got my Chevy Malibu. Mm. Um, yeah, that was a uh, man. That, so I'll tell you the, the fucking car. That's I a car of compromise. My wife got <laughs> uh, because she hates speed and like any any type of performance at all so she just wants it to be like you know safe and this was like about a, a decade ago she got a honda insight oh yeah <laughs> yeah and i was like what the fuck she just showed up with it i was like what is this and she was like oh it's great you know it's a hybrid and uh, it gets like a hundred miles a gallon and then there was no setting to make the air conditioning come on <laughs> When 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 it, when you'd go to a stoplight and it would go into like uh, electric mode, I was like, dude, I'm fucking dying in here. And so, it, like for six months of the year in this car, and it would go zero to sixty in like nineteen seconds. Yeah, I hated it so much. And when you're sitting I've in, there's a lot of stopping in L.A. too. If it cuts off the air compressor every time you stop, that's a real problem. Yeah. So I would, if I drove that car, I would. We go to a stoplight, and I would immediately throw it in neutral and just floor it. So that the air conditioning was it's actually pretty ingenious work. I mean, it's the only way to make it work. I hate it. Well, there's other, car. you know, now what we see with uh, cars that have start stop technology, same thing, right? When the car stops yep. at the red light, it kills the it. AC compressor. So you get about 30 seconds of cold air, and then it's dead. And if it's a good car, like a Range Rover or something, it'll kick back on. But if it's like yeah. an economy car, they're like, go fuck yourself. Or if you stop to parallel yourself. park yeah. and you wait too long then you try to turn the wheel and the car clicks off then hey guys sorry to cut away from the show like this here but unfortunately we had a bit of a technical glitch with zoom and we lost about 90 seconds of the show uh interrupted us talking about start stop technology and it cut back in with tom asking me about what else the Countach. sorry here's the rest of the show Rules. I would love to. I mean, oh, like, yeah. I, these are the posters I fucking had on my wall. Oh know? no, it's my pleasure to take out friends in the car. It fu it's great oh. fun, and I and I put I drive it a lot. It works absolutely perfectly. Knock wood. Go down. Wait, scroll down. There's Diddy in it. If you go down, there's a picture of Diddy sitting in it. Uh, there. Amazing. Uh, so um, yeah, it's fucking awesome. And uh, I have a, a 1987 Porsche 911 Safari car. I have a, that I've seen yeah, in, your, in one of your videos. Yeah, it's like pink. <laughs> and that I, looks dope as shit, though, yeah, man. Yeah, that rules. No, that thing is great fun too. That's the that's a city car. And then I've got a, a Delica, which is an old Japanese minivan, like imported from Japan. Like it's a weird uh -huh. like Japanese space van. Uh, I have an Aston Martin Vanquish, one of the older ones. What? Yeah, like the James Bond one. That's um, so fucking cool, with dude. A, with a manual conversion, which is really cool, because it stick is forever. That should be a James Bond movie. A stick, stick is forever. Stick is forever. Or uh, a porn, yeah. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's probably yeah, a porn. Probably a porn, yeah. 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 Uh, and then I have my mom's Jaguar F-Type, which um, my father and I bought my mom an F-Type for her birthday. Uh, I won't say what year it was, but she drove it in five years. She drove it like 2,400 miles <laughs> and then she moved into a new house, the smaller garage and she just sent it out here t for me. And so now I drive it. Nice. Yeah, That's nice. So, so yeah, we've, and then we have, you know, a rotating assembly of, uh, of test cars, which is all we always have. There's always something new. I get a new car every week. So it's like, it's pretty. That's pretty wild, cool. man. I'm going to get you on this flow though. There's no reason that someone of your stature should not be driving manufacturer provided vehicles regularly. Well, Matt, I'm going to hit you up for this. I, you don't even you have up. to. I'm just going to do it. It's easy. It's not a thing that's hard. It's just knowing the right people. And there's, it's okay. very easy to figure out who those people are. Um, Dude, we have like a million questions from our fans. Are any of them specific to Tom and interesting? 
There are there are so <laughs> many like inside baseball references from your comedy specials or yeah, your sure. interaction with Bur- like guess, your fans yeah. have been going ham in the chat. So uh, there's just a lot of random ass shit. All right, in well, there. Zach, Zach can dig a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll dig a little continue. bit and look for a question. Yo, I I noticed Tom, if you don't mind, you, I, I don't see it on your social media much, but I noticed in Ball Hog that you were wearing a new Rolex sport watch. Are you a watch fan as well? I, I like watches. Yeah, I like watches. So we're like um, we're like the same person. You just drive. You just go around the country like I do, acquiring yeah. cars and watches, and and saying yelling at people. This is great. We should be friends. It's the, it's, we should definitely be friends. Yeah, I got what do I have? I have the uh, GMT. Um, uh, what is it? The steel GMT yeah. master uh, that uh, just got discontinued, which is good for the me. Ba- the Batman one, right? The blue and black. I have a Pepsi. Oh, nice. That's a different one. Yeah. I have the uh, I have the all steel GMT two that uh, was discontinued, I believe, last year. Um, and then I have a uh, a day date, and then I have uh, Panerai oh, uh, nice. all black ceramic. Oh, yeah. cool! Yeah, well rounded. What got you into watches? <sighs> Man, I um, I just I I rem- oh well, you know, in high school, I remember there was a, a couple people that had subs. That I was like, man, that's such a. I just thought it was like the most beautiful. You know, it's an iconic watch. Yeah. And so I, I, I just kind of always wanted one. And then when it came time, the first one I got was uh, the the day date. And then a year later, I was trying to find a sub. I couldn't find one, but that GMT was um, brought to my attention, and I was like, oh, it's just like a it looked like a like steroided out sub. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then I then you, you it's like an addiction. You just start like tracking them down and Well it's you know, it's like it's like cars, but they're easier to store. They, you don't exactly. have to maintain and yeah. insure them. You know, it's like I had to in, in about twenty sixteen and seventeen I had to downsize my car collection all, very fast and it was it coincided right with when I was getting into like peak watch nerdery and it became yeah. like a real problem for like a oh, year. Oh yeah. And, I mean believe uh, me, my wife is like, please get another watch. <laughs> <laughs> Not another fucking car, please. Yeah, like, right. mm. That's what my wife. My wife's like anything to keep you from buying more cars. Oh, but wait till I go downstairs and be like, Matt said I can store cars at his place. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh fuck. Well, you know, we have uh, certain privacy clauses, you know, where if certain people ask, certain people come knocking, we don't know who you are, brother. <laughs> I know how this works. Right. I had, and I'm going to tell you a fucking, I want to tell you a quick little story because because the guy is not going to be a customer. I had a guy come in, and I've been giving tours to prospective customers, and I had a guy come in, and he, he was dressed in a very blue-collar way, but he talked a really big game. And in L.A., I know a few people who, who are fairly blue-collar guys but are really fucking rich, so you never underestimate. Yeah, you never know. No. And this guy, he's a Latino guy. First, he gives me shit for not speaking good Spanish. He's like, what? basically like, you're in L.A., you need to speak Spanish. And I'm like, whatever, man, you what? speak Wait, English. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you stop there. Yeah. A fucking guy was like, hey, your Spanish isn't great? I'm he was like, like you really should need to learn Spanish if you're going to be doing business in L.A. And I was like, all right, man. That's whatever. insane. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I give him the tour, and he asks me, straight faced. He goes, listen, when I come with my, with my buddies to get my, my people to get my car, Am I going to be the only people here? And I go, well, we're not open to the public. You know, it's a members only facility. But like, if you're coming to get your car and Dave is coming to get his car, like you're going to see each other in the lobby, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. And he goes, oh, that's not cool. And I go, what are you talking about, man? And he's like, well, I work in low riders and, you know, some of my boys are like gang affiliated. And if I came down here with one of them, what if one of somebody from a other gang was here to get their car? This is a serious conversation I have with this guy. And I go, are you asking if I have a gang policy <laughs> of how to how to deal with rival gangs? <laughs> like, yeah, man. Uh, uh, I I'm not really prepared for that. <laughs> I even said to the guy, like, I'll tell you what, four cars or more, you can have the exclusive. Whatever team you're on, you can be the exclusive gang at Westside Collector Car Storage. But like, ah, it was the most awkward <laughs> person asking for something, and it Dude, really bugged me out. This- you should be like, yeah, I mean, you'll just have to shoot that guy if he and, shows up. Well, then later I'm showing him and he's going, this idea is amazing, bro. Where's the next one? I go, you know, let me let me finish this one and get it open first. He goes, I'll call the cartel and get $100 million. And I go, whoa, <laughs> let's not do that. 
Let's not. Fucking so wait, tell people. me about this business though. Like, so how does this place work? Can you tell me? Yeah, you you are a member, and mm-hmm. we keep your car. Uh, you bring it in, and uh, when you when you come in, your car gets ch- photographed, nine photographs all around, all four sides, all four wheels under the front bumper, and we note the mileage. That goes into the cloud in Tom's E sixty three S file, and that's permanent, creating a record. And then your car is tucked away and put on a battery tender. And then we have an app. And when you want your car, you just click, click, uh, and we bring it down for you. And when you leave your house, by the time you show up, it's it's right out front and, and ready to go. It's um, great. And we've got detailed bay on site. We've got every spot as battery tending. And, you know, it's it's a spot that's meant to help guys like you and I that are at a point where we can have a couple of cool toys, but not at the point where we're Seinfeld buying buildings all over fucking West L.A. Sure. Um, and uh, Wait, is he buying L.A. Bo- buildings, too? I don't want to say any more about any of that, but okay. <laughs> he has some cars out here. Yeah, he has some cars out here. All right. yeah. I-, I knew that he had that, uh, you know, that garage that he built in new york oh the uh, crazy one yeah he's got the crazy one in new york city which photographs amazingly but it's not actually that big that's much okay. more of a man cave it only holds a couple cars his his big place in new york is out in like the hamptons or wherever he's at out at the out at the end okay um, but they've got, but some, got they've la got cars, cars out here too. yeah because right, cool, you know your homies with spike right yeah 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 so they're all, that's yeah, that's yeah. the the jerry spike um, Zuckerman, Zuck, Malibu, yeah, yeah. Porsche, Triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I know Zuck's got his whole setup yeah. too, you know. Oh, yeah. If you haven't yeah. been over there, it's... it's <laughs> Personal awesome. injury law is a good business, my friend. <laughs> I know, man. I mean, we talked about it. And I was I was going to go, and he's like, oh, come. He goes, then you can take one of the cars. And I was like, okay. Yeah, he's cool uh, like that. He'll let you drive him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but he had, I mean, like, just from his, you know, what he was posting, I was like, yeah. You know, every time you're like, you have a 911 R, you have like, he, every, he has everything. One of everything. Like, it's it's yeah. a, it's a man of taste. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're gonna get we're gonna get you a bunch of seat time and stuff, dude. It's we're gonna we're gonna get this going. But I'm if you excited. have a hook up at the PEC, you're good there. That's the best place ever. That place is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a racetrack. And I got a plug. Uh, it's well, it's you know coronavirus. But first Saturday of every month, once coronavirus is over, uh, morning shift at PEC. It's the best cars and coffee in LA. Um, really? Yeah, dude. It's a great cars and coffee for a couple of reasons. One, private property, so the cops won't kick you off. Two, really good food, really good coffee. Three, nice quiet place to poop if you need. Great bathrooms. True. You drink okay. a lot of you drink a lot of coffee at those, man. You never know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Zach, do All you right, find any good questions. questions from fans? Yeah, Tom, uh, you, Tom, are you in a hurry? Do you have a few minutes? I have a few minutes. Yeah, right, yeah. Cool. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, no worries. All right. Uh, someone said, uh, "Hey, jeans, what's in your five car dream garage?" Just like no, you have all the money, you have all the space. Oh, that's a great question. Five car dream garage. Um, well, I think I would probably get a GT2 RS. Mm. Um, I think I would probably get like um, a Senna and maybe like a. Um, I like that forty-eight pista. You yeah, know? you're really, you're really Ooh. make, you're like having, a, awesome. you're like having a magazine test in your personal garage. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you got, you got every, everyone's hottest shit from, from this past Dude, year. Dude, the pista's so sick. It's yeah, so good it's looking. So sick. I've, I've encouraged somebody to, to, to uh, buy, buy one. That so, shouldn't uh, need too much encouraging. Yeah, it doesn't take too much, but I, I was, I was pushing them. Um, and then uh, let me see what else would I get. I would, honestly, I I, I kind of would, even though I haven't experienced it yet. I- even hearing you talk, I would want to get that GT4. You know? Oh, I, they're I, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're lovely. I, just, I, I I'll always have that affection for the Caymans because it was that first one that I really got, and so I think I would I would definitely seek something like that out. And then I guess maybe like the. The Taycan, because you're saying uh, I haven't had no, I haven't had an electric car yet. Yeah, no, you have to try that because it's really something. It's a totally unique experience, and I can tell that you're someone who enjoys a unique car experience. Yeah. Um, and this, there's nothing like it really. I mean, a a, a Tesla is kind of like it, but but not really. A Tesla is like a Taycan in the ways that a Corvette is like a 911. You know what I mean? 
it's, yeah. it's it's really that that is a pretty apt comparison of those two cars i think um yeah. <laughs> did you speaking of tesla can you pronounce elon's kid's name <laughs> yeah it's um ash ash 1982. <laughs> it's amazing. I have the same combination on my luggage. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy. My favorite, I, I watched just like a little bit of Elon on uh, on, on Joe's podcast, and he, he brings it up. He's like, how do you say the name? And uh, Elon's like, yeah, you know, my lady, name. she's really good at names. It's like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's, really, she's not really good at names. No. <laughs> she's really good at doing drugs and hairstyle. I was talking to my friend and I was like, I have a theory that in 20 years, we are going to see Elon Musk give an interview, possibly from prison, and he's going to say, yeah, man, the, the spring of 2020, I was just so deep into that vial of acid. Like, I don't even <laughs> know what was going on, man. <laughs> and they'll be like, you know, you had a kid, right? Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I remember that one. Oh, yeah. What's his name again? It's the same combination as my luggage. They're like, oh, you're, you're, so your wife Grimes came to visit. He's like, her name's what? You got to be kidding me. Wife? <laughs> what are you talking really? about wife? Oh, are they? Did, did they get me? No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just joking. I don't know what they are. Either way, someone needs to tell me how to pronounce that fucking name. I don't know how to say it. I really don't. Just mash the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what is that one? Press fist on keyboard. It's from The Simpsons yeah. or whatever. Like in Batman. If your fingers are too fat to dial, <laughs> mash, mash your key. palm against the keyboard now. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got, Zach? Um, Tom, if you had to go on a west uh, coast-to-coast road trip in a very small British roadster with one of the following co-drivers, who would you pick? Uh, Garth Brooks, Hard Rock Nick, or Fed Smoker? Oh, man. Um, I mean, it would definitely be the most entertaining and dangerous to have fed smoker rest in peace but um i don't you know i definitely would not get anywhere near garth i don't know what would happen if, <laughs> if um you know he's unpredictable obviously violent so i i, I think i would st- take the safe route and go with fed smoker man <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, someone asked do you prefer two strokes or four strokes my brother didn't believe me that four strokes are the best Four strokes, of course. <laughs> who prefers two strokes except like guys who race motocross? It's like a, it's like a hundred people globally like two strokes. Everyone yeah, else is course. like in the modern age. Four strokes, man. Four All strokes right. for life. Um, non-car question: Which character in a TV show would you kill and why? This is inspired by uh, uh, the wisdom of "There's no better feeling than killing the enemy." <laughs> <laughs> what inspired by my dad? Yeah. Um, which character from a TV show would I kill? Dawson, for sure, dude. Ooh. <laughs> Drown him in the creek. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, everybody hated him so much. It felt like collective hate. It's a really good one. I might have to just go with Matt's suggestion on that one. You can't top Dawson. How about fucking Joe Exotic? <laughs> Man, you know, he is so, like... He's fun until you meet him, I bet. You know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah. he, like you're like, this guy's a hoot. And then you get wrapped up in his world, you'd be like, God damn it. This was the worst experience <laughs> of my life. He <laughs> like, had such it, good meth, though, you guys. <laughs> Have you ever petted a tiger after doing meth? He fucking claws in you, and it would be a, you would be in a toxic tailspin. Forever. I cannot wait for the Nicolas Cage portrayal, dude. Straight I know. Up, I'm so ready. Did you so watch, ready. by the way, I haven't seen the uh, the added episode. Have you seen it? Uh, I watched part of it. My wife got very into it. Apparently, everyone everyone throws him under the bus. <laughs> like every, everybody is just like throws he, Joe under the bus. Yeah, yeah. They're all yeah, like, yeah. he's a fucking lunatic, and he belongs. Yeah, in jail. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's pretty predictable, I think. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oscar cool. Oscar Gonzalez said, um, pick one vehicle to go across country and pick up and bang as many girls as possible. Obviously, this would only work if he says hypothetically you're all single. <laughs> it's a competition. Hypothetically, wow. It's a competition to to bang girls. Wow, it's not. It's so a, wait, a Morgan what's the, What is the question though? What car would you choose <laughs> to take on a road trip to try to get laid as much as possible on a coast to coast STD extravaganza? <laughs> oh well, you know you need the space to actually have your orgies. So you're you're obviously going like full size excursion or something, man. Like you want to have comfort if you're banging on the road. All you, you can't be in like a little roadster. Sprinter so, van. Sprinter van would Sprinter be dope. Van is yeah, where it's at. Yeah, we we have to figure out which celebrity has the most tasteless Sprinter van. I think Tyrese. Adam Pacman Jones. Oh really? Have you seen it? Yeah. You're just guessing. No, I've spoken to some teammates. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ty, Tyrese is uh, is has this car 
quote brand that he has that is yeah. the Voltron brand, like from Transformers. <laughs> and he puts this shit on everything. And it's got the Voltron Sprinter. It's it's really embarrassing. Well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that Adams is tasteless. It's more that it's just like wi- like wild. So. My, yeah, that's, my buddy that's the said Tyrese that, like, Voltron he opened Jeep. The, the door and he's like, it's Louis Vuitton season shit. <laughs> you know, like, he's like, how much are they, how much was this? He's like, oh, I upgraded it like 300 grand. Like, oh my God. Have so, you ever seen that thing? Uh, it's called a darts, D-A-R-T-Z. No. A darts, it sort of looks like a military vehicle. It's from Eastern Europe somewhere. And it's the most opulent thing that is made and they literally offer an option or the PETA might have got involved they might have had to stop but they had a whale penis leather option and I'm not making that up really yeah whale penis you get whale penis on the I would if that's an option you take that option for sure I mean who wouldn't uh, yeah. can you can you show Tom a picture of what a darts is it's right. it's basically like you know what the rock drove in fast and the furious it's pretty much kind of like one of those Dude, I imagine think- someone gets and you're like, you're sitting on whale dick right now. Man. <laughs> like, it's such, like, that's such it's a flex, fine. dude. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, our, our virtual camera out has not been working, so we can't show Tom photos. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Weird, weird. Oh, it doesn't work glitch. on FaceTime? Or whatever? Ah, eh, fuck it. I think we changed We changed our co- or we changed cameras mid-course yeah, that, yeah, and yeah, that yeah, fucked yeah. us up. Um, right now, we're begging and we can't be choosing, and that's okay. Yes. Uh, Colton Streck says, my friend Brett keeps putting Confederate flags on all his cars. He says it's for Southern pride, but I think he may be racist. What would you do, Tom? Holy shit. That's a fucking question. With with (laughs) I think this is an inside baseball question. Is that an inside baseball question or is is that actually, do you have a, do you have a bit about Confederate flags on vehicles? No, I don't. So can you you break this down for me? Oh, wow. Again, I I, I just assumed this was like uh, some meme someone created, uh, Someone said his friend keeps putting Confederate flags on his cars. He says it's for Southern pride, but I think he's racist. What should this guy do? <laughs> that guy's racist. Yeah. 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 Okay. Confederate yeah. flags mean one thing in 2020. It's Come on, man. <laughs> Some questions still are like, simple. But you don't understand our history. We got it. We definitely got it. So It's stop. about states' rights. Really? The states' rights to do what exactly? <laughs> They're taking our statues. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Uh, do you have a favorite old car that you've driven or one you would aspire to drive or own? Oh, my God. A favorite car that I've driven or aspire to own. I mean, there's definitely ones that I aspire to own, but... You know what What, what fucking car was so super cool, man? Did you see uh, uh, Knives Out? Yes, that I BMW did. BMW that uh, Chris... What is his name? Wait, I need to be reminded of what what uh, the car was. The BMW BM- from Knives yeah. Out. Was it like uh, an old school one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it yeah. like a CSL or something? I need to. Yes. Uh, it was yeah. right. I think it was a, like a seventies CSL. Yeah, those are fantastic. They're also that- crazy expensive. Are they? Yes. I mean, no. Well, they range. You can get the sort of basic three point oh CS. Forty fifty thousand dollars. If you want the CSL with the the lightweight, the motor sporty shit, then it's like a hundred and something thousand dollars. You want the crazy one with the wings? That's the homologation race car. Now it's like three hundred grand. Yeah, they're expensive. I think I think it was a seventy two CSI. Is that right? That sounds possible. That- yeah, CSI, CS, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful cars. There's someone on my block who's got one. It's dope. Those are pretty dope. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like. Uh, there's like these the old Jag E E type. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a great place in Orange County that um, has a bunch of those, and and like also, I've always wanted to drive one of those old uh, Shelby Daytonas. Like oh the, yeah. Uh, oh well, yeah. You know, Daytona. you know where where you can set you up with is Superformance. They build the yeah, recreations. Yeah, they're not far. They're in Orange County. They'll let you drive one. They have press really? cars. Really? Yes, they have. They have press testers. They'll let you drive one. Have you driven one of those? I have. I've driven. I I owned one of their. Cobras, a regular, a traditional open top Cobra, back uh-huh. in the day, when I was like twenty five, and I you it, owned that at twenty five. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't that expensive. It because I bought it used and shit, but it was. It wanted me dead. It was ridiculous. I could not handle it. I saw. I drove it maybe ten times and I sold it. It wanted me dead. Uh, oh wow! Recently, I mean, maybe two or three years ago, I drove their Daytona Coupe. It was very fun. Um, I also drove the GT40 they built, 
which is fucking nuts. Um, They offer two or three different engines. You can get left-hand drive, right-hand drive, center shift, sill shift. It can look just like the Lamar cars. It can be 800 horsepower. They have a demo I want to go car. to it's Super crazy. Bowl. I, that, I have lost myself on their website before. It's been a while, but I've, I've definitely done a deep dive there. They're lovely people. They're really nice people. They sell, I think, you know, for a recreation, it's a pretty high quality product. Uh-huh. Um, and and I've had a good time driving them. I, I've never really had a, a bad experience in one. I mean, the one I had was so sketchy, but like, I also didn't, re- I wasn't a good driver. I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I don't, I don't know how much to really blame the car and how much to really blame myself. Well, let me ask that. you this. Same kind of question for you. If you could get any modern a a new car now Mm. what would that be and if you could get any like throwback older car what would that be well budget budget cost no option you know supercars i would have a 720 i would definitely i'd have a mclaren 720 if we're talking about the supercar levels if we're talking about ultimate daily driver i would have a tycon turbo s because it's just so next level and if you're talking about old i've driven some really dope old shit dude I, i bet i drove a 300 sl gullwing that like from the 50s mercedes Mm. that was so easy to drive you could daily it without even thinking about it it was and it wasn't like modernized in any way no original it was fucking cool now some old cars are not like that some old cars like old american cars are like shit piles old german cars are screwed together really tight wow yeah it's a difference you got to go go try have spike or zuckerman let you drive one of their 356s or something and you'll go oh Oh, it's only American cars that were terrible back then. The rest of the cars are kind of okay. And so are those old 356s? Those are fun, like cool to drive. They they're are. Hard. They're slow. You know, they're yeah. they are slow, but but you can feel you can feel where how they got to now starting with that, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, and they yeah. they have better they're slow, but they have better brakes and better suspension and sharper steering than you would expect if you've only driven like old American cars. Okay. They're not sloppy. You know what I mean? They're they're slow, yeah. but they're not sloppy. Um, yeah, yeah. and and they're and they're great fun. They're great fun. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. That's, you have Anything good else? taste. Is that it? Tom that's our show, buddy. I want to thank Dude. you for your time. I really appreciate it. Can we do this again? I would love to. I would love to do this again. Maybe one day even in person, in face person. to face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we when we're moving into our new studio very soon and hopefully it'll be fucking AIDS free, you know. I want to come visit your the facility, the the storage place. I want to talk to you about Car shopping. I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I can be your, your consigliere about these things. No, we can. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to set you up with all kinds of stuff. We're going to get you. We're going to get you in some press cars. We'll figure out how you can feed your personal car addiction without your wife getting too mad. Great. And uh, and we'll go for we'll go for lunch to Malibu in the Countach. That's a nice. Oh, super excited. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, I know. It's cool. it's really really fun. And I and I'm such a fan of your comedy. Um, I really enjoyed your last three specials immensely. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, I appreciate that very much. And um, I think you are a fucking heavy hitter, and I can't wait to see you at the store again um, when uh, when that's a thing. Me too. Fucking Me too, hopefully. Man. How I mean, like, other than like recording all the podcasts, like, are you you know, or how are you staying sane? Are you writing a lot? What are you doing? I have a book that I'm working on, oh, and cool. then I uh, we're pitching a show, an animated show. So that's keeping us like kind of occupied oh awesome well when it comes time when they pick that up and it comes time to do press make sure the smoking tire podcast is on your press tour for that definitely all you right got I'll, it, man. I'll talk to you real soon i mean you're gonna get okay. a bunch of emails from me where you're copied on with fucking press car people so that's how that's I can't gonna wait. work i really can't wait and i and i really thank you so much for that of course dude that's all it's the least i can do for uh for people who entertain us appreciate um, it man that's all for the live audience. I'm sorry if we didn't get to every single one of your questions, people. We appreciate all of you. There's only so much time in the show, uh, and Tom's time is, of course, very valuable. And uh, we will see you all next week. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at ShoutEngine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, some mildly famous guests, and ideally something to say. See you all later.